The section that we're focusing on here is section 5.4, which contains theorems about definite integrals. Now, just a quick setup, since I'm doing this pencast, I want to make sure you're all um, grounded in where I'm coming from. Here's basically where I'm coming from. We have seen that the limit as n goes to infinity, summing up from the first rectangle to that nth theoretical last rectangle of heights of those rectangles notated f of x of i times delta x, where delta x is the interval length b minus a cut up into n parts, so b minus a over n. This whole idea of unpacking the accumulation of areas of rectangles can be expressed with the definite integral. And this definite integral has theorems that uh, are connected to it. And what we're going to do here, here's the big message. We'll call it the big message. So later on in your pen ca in this pencast, when you're wondering, what's the big message? Just come back here and click where it says big message. And you can remember that the big message is this. see here are not incredibly challenging to understand. In fact, you don't really need me to even post this pencast. If you understand the, uh, uh, the definite integral up here, if you understand really what's going on here, these theorems will just be really simple to see. Well, maybe I shouldn't say simple, but, but doable, manageable, very accessible, I'll say. Let me give you an example. Here's the first theorem uh, in the book. It's theorem 5.2, properties of limits of integration. And the first property says this. If you have the integral from a to b of f of x dx, that's equivalent to the opposite of the integral from b to a of f of x dx. So you see, on the one hand, somebody might look at this and go, okay, I'll memorize that, and I'll write it down on the test, and whatever. But that's not really the point. The point isn't for you to memorize this. The point, the job, the thrill, really, is for you to make sense of this. Here's how I would do that. This side over here, this integral, is really saying this. If you summed up the areas of rectangles under a curve f of x, any old f of x that you like, and it's on the interval from A to B, then the area under this curve would be defined by this. And in fact, that area under this curve between A and B could be found by the fundamental theorem of calculus, the greatest intellectual achievement of all time, by taking big F of B minus big F of A. And remember, the relationship between these two functions is that if you took the derivative of big F, you would get little f. Well, now, let's look at the other side of this thing. It says that this area here is equivalent to the area under the curve instead of a to b if you went from b to a. So imagine this. Imagine that you had in, uh, a function, and you were going from... But for whatever reason, instead of integrating from a to b like we would up here, you integrated from b to a. What if you flip things around? What if you did the integral from b to a of f of x dx? Well, following the fundamental theorem of calculus, what you would see is up here we did f of b, big f of b, minus f of a. Well, down here we would have to do big f of a. Notice the connection. The b gets inserted in first. Now the a is going to have to get inserted in first. You do big F of A minus big F of B. So what's the relationship between these two guys? You know, if you were to subtract F of B minus F of A compared to F of A minus F of B, well, they're equivalent except opposite. That is, F of B minus F of A is the opposite of F of A 
minus f of b. So, I mean, that's just one way you can kind of make sense, I hope, make sense of this theorem. Let me do another one quickly. See if you could uh, see how this one works. Theorem number two says this. If you have the integral from a to c plus the integral from c to b, that's the same as taking the integral from a to b of f of x dx. Now again, if you really focus on the meaning of these integrals, this thing just kind of falls apart really clearly as well. Let me show you what I mean. Here is just generic dual function f of x on some interval. And what we're looking for is, of course, with these integrals, we're summing up the area underneath this curve. Well, this first integral says, imagine that you're taking the area from A to C. Let's say it's A to C. So we're finding this area first. Then, the second integral says, you're going to find the area from C to B. Let's say it's B out here. So this area will be connected to the second integral. Well, isn't it pretty clear as you look at this picture that if you took the area between A and C, and then the area between C and B, and you added those two areas, you would get the equivalent of the area between A and B. This is what we have here. I hope somehow talking through this and, and um, seeing the picture gets you the sense of what I'm talking about here. If you were to examine any of these theorems, you should be able to symbolically and graphically and just with the meanings of all of those things make sense and you will be very happy. Now I'm going to do just uh, one more uh, theorem. Um, and again, the point here is not for you to memorize theorems or regurgitate these theorems or whatever. The point of this whole activity, this exercise, is to have you make sense of stuff. And so uh, your in-class activity on Monday will be to give you some practice in doing just that. So here is another one. Let's say instead of finding the area under a curve, which, you know, means taking the area down to the x-axis under that curve, let's say we wanted to find the area between two curves. The area between two curves, just generically speaking here, let's say we had some function f of x. And let's say we had some other function g of x. Now what we're really interested in here, for whatever reason, actually you're going to see some reasons later on, we're really interested in the area in between those two curves. How would you do it? Well, let me just write a couple things down here and see if you can imagine. Imagine with me. Try to build some mental images of what these symbols really represent. For example, what if I wanted to find the area just under f of x? Of course, now with our symbolism, we would say take the integral between a and b. Again, let's just designate an interval here. Let's say these two functions intersect at a and again out here at b. So the area between those curves would be between a and b. Well, I'm right now talking about the area under just f of x. The area under just f of x would be expressed this way. Visually, what we're really doing, if I just look at one representative piece of the area under the curve, is this. We would take this interval from a to b, cut it up into many, 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 many parts. We say n goes to infinity. And let's just look at one of those parts. And remember, if we do break this up into infinitely many pieces, this little thing here we call dx, or a little bit of x. So we'll take an x value, we'll go up to the curve, and we'll create this rectangle. It's going to be really thin. And what we're really doing is finding the area of that rectangle. And the area of that rectangle, the, uh, the height of the rectangle is measured by the function f of x, where this is, for instance, one of the x values. And dx is that little bit of x that we're talking about. Now what about g of x? 
the area under g of x would similarly be expressed as the integral from a to b of g of x dx. Now again, visually, I would be talking about areas like this. This rectangle with that little bit of x and some particular f of x here would be the uh, areas that we're talking about, accumulating all those areas underneath g of x. Well, can you imagine this now? What if I took the area underneath f of x, which would be all this area, and then I subtracted from it the area underneath g of x, which would be all this area? Wouldn't it be the case, then, that I would get the area in between those two curves? So really what we're saying is to get the area between the two curves is we would say take the integral from a to b of f of x dx and then subtract the area under the curve of g of x dx. And we can express this more succinctly as follows. We can just integrate once between a and b. And what we can integrate now is instead of two individual integrals is we can integrate f of x minus g of x dx. Because why? What would happen if we took f of x and subtracted g of x? If you go back up here to my picture, you might see it. f of x corresponds to the height of these larger rectangles. g of x corresponds to the height of these shorter rectangles. And subtracting those two heights gives me heights of rectangles in between those two curves, exactly what we desire. So I hope with these three examples you kind of get the flavor of what I'm looking for here. You should be able to take any one of these theorems, and again, it's not about memorizing it or something. It's about seeing it and making sense of it and articulating your understanding of the symbols, the pictures, the meanings, all, all, all connected together in your brain. Growing dendrites. <laughs>